congratulations to Paul Nuttall, officially declared the most popular guy in UKIP, which has got to feel like a bit of a hollow victory. It's a bit like being the least annoying PPI claims cold caller or the most attractive of Donald Trump's chins. But let's speak now to one of the party faithful, Lavender Dar, Pleasure Beach. Uh, so what is your reaction to the news? Ah, well, I'm bloody delighted. I think we've appointed the white candidate for the job. Did you mean the, the right candidate? Yes, the white candidate. He's a unity candidate. We need to bring everyone in Britain together so we can all, as one, say, we don't like that lot over there on the other side of the water. Now, Nuttall wants to ban the burqa in public places. He says, and this is true, that a ban on wearing the burqa is vital to protect the rights of those women who don't have a choice about whether or not to wear a burqa. Yeah, he literally said that without any irony. The best way to protect choice is to take it away from the other. It's like saying we want to promote the freedom to eat bacon by taking away the right to eat beans and sausages. Well, it's a terrible medieval practice. Paul wants us to live in a modern, progressive society where gay rights aren't protected, sexism's tolerated, the death penalty is brought back, and women who want abortions are forced into the back streets. He says that he's a Catholic and on gay rights and abortion, he said we are 100% behind the Catholic Church. So is religion important to UKIP's policies? Oh yes, worshipping a guy from the Middle East is a key part of being British. I'm not like nut roast Corbyn, no. I celebrate all the good British Christian festivals like Christmas Day, Pancake Day, Bonfire Night. Isn't Bonfire Night about burning a Catholic who was trying to get into Parliament? Look, we're trying to stand up for ordinary Christians. It's not easy being Christian in 2016. I mean, it's a load of unscientific bollocks. But we're good at unscientific bollocks. I mean, Nuttall himself calls climate change a money-led scam. Christians in this country, they're like my coat. They're an endangered species. OK, look, let's deal with this, right? I tell you what I think we should do for Christians. Let's build them a large, ornate building in every single town, borough, village, hamlet, and let's fill up every high street with lights for a whole month when their special festival comes along. Let's have literally every shop packed from wall to wall with tacky Christmas packaging and marketing. Let's even reserve some special seats in Parliament just exclusively for religious leaders, you know, like they do in Iran. Oh, and let's have the Prime Minister still, after all of that, carry on acting as though somehow Christians are entitled to more. Of course, we're now into the season of, of Advent and we have a very strong <laughs> tradition in this country of religious tolerance and freedom of speech. And our Christian heritage is something we can all be proud of. And um, I'm sure we would all want to ensure that people at work do feel able to speak about their faith uh, and, uh, and also feel able to speak quite freely about Christmas. Also, he looks like a bouncer. I, I don't think we should judge people on their looks. Well, didn't you make a joke about Donald Trump's chins earlier? Actually, it was a reference to the fact that he considered those photos unflattering and had tried to suppress them in the media, and various media responded angrily to the idea that the president should be able to control the press by publishing the off-putting photos. And if anyone in the UK media needs an off-putting photo of Paul Nuttall, I suggest this fucking awesome one by Guy Smallman, which I think, you know, captures a really telling angle. But still, the point is, let's not judge people on their looks, OK? No, leave that to the UK Borders Agency, eh? But it'll be useful to have a leader who looks like a bouncer for our new party slogan. If you're not on the list, you're not coming in. Also, for the next time, one of our meetings descends into an actual fight like it did in Strasbourg the other month. Nuttall has actually said that the punch-up was the best thing to happen to UKIP. And to be honest, I can't even argue with that. I mean, I am 
openly against any sort of violence, blood sports. I think all conflict should be resolved with poetry slams, competitive macrame and oily group sex. But I genuinely cannot think of a single thing UKIP have ever done that was more useful to the future of humanity than to physically hurt each other. His explanation is that after the incident, everyone woke up, which is true, but it is a terrible choice of phrase when you remember that one of them woke up in intensive care. I got this information from UKIP's own newsletter, or as it's better known, the Daily Express. It was right underneath a link to a headline that read, Watch! Presenter accidentally flashes her breast after wardrobe malfunction on live TV. So we know that they're covering, or, you know, uncovering, all the important stories. Now, but look, I mean, we all know the Express is just trying to offer titillating clickbait for their readers. You know, there's loads of it, right? Furious TV star is left humiliated after a male colleague lifts up her top live on air. Gorgeous model exposes all in sheer underwear on the catwalk. Shock images. Is this Hitler's Nazi bride, Eva Braun, pictured naked? Whoa. Hang on. Naked pictures of Eva Braun. I'm not making this up, OK? The Express are literally just admitting that their readers like to wank while thinking about the Nazis. Oh, sexy Nazis. Farage has described his legacy, saying UKIP has shifted to the centre of gravity for British politics and even claiming credit for Trump's election in the US. And the thing is that, to a certain extent, both of these things are true. The question is much less, have UKIP has an effect, but why have we let them have so big an effect? And the answer, of course, is the media. You know, Farage was never elected an MP. He was only ever an MEP, part of an organisation that he himself calls undemocratic. Nuttall won the UKIP leadership contest with about 9,000 votes, 63%, and yet the BBC described it as a thumping win. Meanwhile, when Caroline Lucas and Jonathan Bartley won the Green Party leadership competition with 85% and 13,000 votes, the BBC immediately started doing stories about how Green Party activists were unhappy about the arrangements. Meanwhile, UKIP seemed to get a representative on almost every TV and radio show, often just somebody who's a local councillor or a party campaign or a candidate. There are parties with more MPs than UKIP, and you don't know what the initials in their name stand for, let alone what their key policies are. And this can only mean that the media coverage is a load of skewed twaddle. They are letting them move the centre ground. And 9,000 votes is a tiny, tiny number of people to be given that much power. We we should be fighting this. We should be fighting for the broader public, for the people, for us, the normal people, with reasonable non-extremist views, to have all our voices heard as loudly and amplified as enthusiastically by the media as this small group of extremists are, led now by this other, even more uh, extreme extremist. And instead of it, what are we doing? We're sat there wanking over Nazis.